What's up Fat IQ fans, tips from the Fat IQ channel. Today we're coming back for a new episode of the Fat IQ show. You know the drill, I'm gonna rank the top 5 fights that happened last weekend and tell you why you must hit the replay button. To make this ranking, I base my opinion on these criteria: Excitement, duration of the fight, opposition level and the way to finish the fight. After that, I'll be picking the top 5 coming matchups. So let's get ready to rumble! On the menu this week we had the PFL in Washington DC, Benavides vs Andrade boxing card in Las Vegas and the Cage Warriors 164 in Newcastle. Fortunately, it was really hard to find some images to display in this video, so there will be mostly talking. Sorry for that. Number 5. Liam Giddens vs Rhys McEwen. Main event of the Cage Warriors 164 for the vacant Bantamweight title. Best fight of the event for sure, and I think one of the best fights I saw in Cage Warriors this year. It was a 5 round war in which we saw two Warriors with no quit in them. At the beginning, the action was mostly on the ground, where Gittins was getting the top position a lot, doing a lot of damages with his ground pound. He opened a huge cut in McEwen's face. But McEwen was, from the bottom, attempting a lot of submissions. He was also attempting reversals. He didn't work a lot, but yeah, the intention was there. He was also looking really sharp during the striking exchanges. He should have tried to keep it there, in my opinion. He wasted some energy in the round 4 to try to go on the ground again and he finally got taken down by Giddens where he got dominated and both guys had still something to give in the round 5 but Giddens finished the round stronger earning the title in the way so great performance from Giddens, congratulations but I think both guys have a great future and I'll be excited to see them again Number 4, Dennis Goldsoff versus Renan Ferreira Co-main event of the PFL and it was for the heavyweight title. I think that a great statement was made on this one. I had actually Goldsoff as a favorite and as the fight began I was pretty sure that he would wrap it up quickly. He took the fight to the ground as soon as he could in round one. He was taking the dominant position right away, he was smothering Ferreira and he came close to finish him with a Kimura. But Ferreira survived and in between rounds him and his corner made some great adjustments. He started round 2 sending some heavy shots from distance, he clipped Goss off with it and as soon as this one tried to clinch in order to take him to the ground, he stayed at distance and hit him a few times with some hard punch directly to the chin. Also fell on the canvas and Ferreira wasted no time to finish him on the ground. So Ferreira is now the 2023 PFL heavyweight champion after finishing a great campaign the best way possible. So a really impressive win, I can't wait to see what's next for him. Will he face Ryan Bader maybe, the Bellator champion, now that they got bought? Let's see. Number 3, Olivier Aubin-Mercier vs Clay Collard. Main event of the PFL for the lightweight championship. One of the best fights of the PFL season and best fight of the event for sure. Both guys had a great campaign coming into this fight and they were both willing to do whatever it takes to grab that $1 million prize and the lightweight belt. It first started as a striking match but the Canadian gangster didn't wait long to go to the ground where he clearly had the advantage. He went from a dominant position to another and soon he got the back of Clay Collard. But around 1 minute left in the first round, I think Aubameyang made a mistake and Collard jumped on the occasion attempting a leg lock. But Aubin Mercier recovered quickly from that one and he got colored backs once again, but he couldn't get the submission though. The rest of that fight was a clash between Collard's great striking and Aubin Mercier's formidable grappling. The first one was trying to damage the Canadian leg as much as possible to slow him down, the other trying to capitalize off his dominant position and finish the fight with a real naked choke. But the fight went the distance and Aubin Mercier got the win by a unanimous decision as well as the $1 million prize and the lightweight belt. But hats off to both fighters, no quit in them, it was really entertaining and I can't wait to see them fight each other next season. Number 2, Jermall Charlo vs Jose Benavides Jr. Co-main event of the Benavides vs Andrade boxing card and oh boy, this one was salty, a lot of personal stuff in this one, the guys didn't like each other at all. It was a confrontation between two different styles, first we had Benavides, the fighter bringing the pressure, he was trying to trap Chalo against the ropes, making the fights a bit dirty and hitting 
his opponent with heavy shots. Then we had Charlo working from the distance with his strong and beautiful jab, setting up accurate power shots. The fight was incredibly intense, a lot of pace in this one. Benavides Jr. has a big heart as his style requires a lot of energy to go that strong for 10 rounds. But Charlo's power was weighing hard on Benavides Jr. We could see that round after round Charlo was taking the advantage the fact that he was heavier at the weigh-in also played a role for sure. Charlo finally got the win via decision. I love the fact that Benavides Jr. came to pay respect to the man that defeated him, especially with all the animosity between them before and during the fight. Really happy to see Charlo back after a long layoff where he battled some mental health issues and I can't wait to see both of them fighters fighting new opponents. And finally, number one, David Benavides versus Demetrius Andrade for the interim WBC Super Middleweight World title. I really loved that fight, there was everything in it. Powerful shots, slick movement, aggressivity, fight IQ, you couldn't ask for more. I really appreciated the game plan of Andrade, he came out low on his foundations, good movement all the time, smart combos from the head to the body and to the head again. He was also trying to bait Benavides to hit him hard when he wasn't protected and trying to cut the distance to negate the reach advantage of the champ. I really do think it was a great strategy and it worked for a while. But from the fourth round, things changed. Benavides started in closing the gap, picked up the pace a little bit more, he pushed Andrade in the ropes and the shots were hitting the target more and more. We could see that Boo Boo was gonna be in a lot of trouble if things stayed that way and at the very end of the round, Benavides knocked him down with a heavy right hand. In the fifth, El Monstro kept walking down Andrade. He took the advantage of every openings to land powerful shots. So much damage was inflicted that in between rounds, the ref called the doctor to check on Andrade. But the round six was beautiful. Benavides kept rolling on Andrade, so much power in his hands, but Boo Boo gave it all. He tried to stay in the fight, countered with good shots, but without enough power to hurt the champ. At the end of the round, Andrade looked exhausted, he absorbed a lot of damage, and the ref came to his corner saying that he will not allow another round like this. Which is when Andrade's corner decided to stop the fight. So Benavides remains the champ, he remains undefeated, and by beating such a good opponent before the limit, proves he is one of the best at 168 pounds. Hats off to him, and I can't wait to see who he will face next. Also, a lot of respect for Andrade, he took a huge challenge and gave it all. Excited to see what's next for him as well. Also to mention this week, great performances from Kyla Harrison, Larissa Pacheco, Derek Brunson and Magomed Kerimov at the PFL. We saw a beautiful submission from Chris Bungard at Cage Wars 164. It's really worth your while. Also, I really got surprised by Subriel Matias. He stopped Ergashev in 5 rounds to keep his belt. Lipinets lost versus Rivera by decision. He didn't look as good as usual. Lamont Roach Jr. is the new WBA Super Featherweight Champ after beating Garcia via decision. And now the top 5 coming matchups. Number 5, Ola Davis vs. Ismael Barroso. Co-main event of the Garcia vs. Duarte boxing card, Saturday 2nd in Houston, Texas. And it will be for the interim WBA World Super Lightweight title. I think it's an interesting matchup. First we have Ora Davis, 31 years old, 25 and 2 with 18 wins via no caps. British fighter has only two losses and it was versus Josh Taylor and Jack Adderall, two highly decorated fighters. Davis is the kind of fighter that likes to pressure his opponent against the rope and then send devastating punches. Since losing to Carroll in 2018, he's on 7 fight win streak including 4 KO or TKO. He will face Ismail Barroso, the Venezuelan is 40 years old, 24 wins, 4 losses, 2 draws, with 22 wins via knockouts. He's a softball, he's tough, he has a powerful left hand, he likes to go to the body first to come back later in the fight to the head with a powerful direct or overhand. He's coming off a controversial loss versus Roly Romero when he got unfairly stopped by the referee. Before that, he was causing a lot of problems to Romero in that fight, even knocking him down. 
I don't see this going the distance, both are powerful and always aiming for the KO. I'd give an edge to Davis, he's younger, he's faster, but we, he will have to be careful and not overlook Barroso if you don't want to be on his ass. Number 4, Sean Brady vs Kelvin Gastelum. It will be on the main card of the UFC Fight Night, Saturday 2nd, in Austin, Texas. I'm a bit skeptical about that one, but it still succeeded to catch my attention. First we have Sean Brady, 15-1, 7 finishes. He was seen as a rising prospect in the welterweight division since entering the UFC in 2019. He piled up 5 dominant wins in a row, including Jake Matthews and Michael Chiesa. Ascension got stopped brutally by Belal Muhammad via TKO in October from 2022. He didn't fight since then, but he decided to climb back the mountain. For this, he will face Kelvin Gastelum. That's the part I'm a bit skeptical about. Gastelum is a tough opponent for sure, but he had difficulties in the past to make 170 and he's ranked 11th in the middleweight division. He's still coming out a really good performance versus Chris Curtis where he won by a unanimous decision. I think it can be really good for him if he gets that weight cut on lock. He was really small for 185 pounds. He lost versus all the high ranked fighters there. Jared Cannonier, Robert Whittaker, Jack Hermanson, and of course Israel Adesanya. If he makes 170 pounds without too much difficulties, I'm sure it will be a great fight. They are two powerful guys with great wrestling skills. Still going with Brady, I think he wants to show he's better than ever, but it won't be easy. I think that it will go to the decision. Number 3, Rob Font versus Davison Figueiredo. Main card of the UFC Fight Night on Saturday 2nd in Austin, Texas. I'm really curious about that one. It will be the first fight at bantamweight for Figueiredo after losing his flyweight title to Brandon Moreno in January. He will face a gatekeeper from the bantamweight division, Rob Font. Font is at the UFC since 2014. He has 10 wins for 6 losses there, 7 finishes and himself got only finished once versus Pedro Munoz via guillotine choke. He fought the cream of the division, Lineker, Munoz, Asuncao, Sergio Pérez, Marlon Moraes, Cody Garbrandt, José Aldo, Chito Vera, and more recently, in 2023, he won versus tough prospect Adrian Yanez via TKO, and then he lost the fight versus Corey Sendagen in a tough five-rounder. So Figgy is warned, it's not easy to get rid of Rob Font. But God of War is tough as well. He's at the UFC since 2017. He has 10 wins, 3 losses and 1 draw there. He watched the flyweight division, beating Pentoja, the actual champion, choking out Tim Elliott, Alex Perez and Joe Benavides. He had tough wars versus Brandon Moreno. He fought 4 times and won only once. He decided to move on and go to the higher weight class. I think it will be good for him as he had some issues in the past to make the weight cut. Also used to add a lot of power at flyweight so I think he will be even stronger at 135. Pretty sure he will win and I think he will make a statement by finishing Rob Font. Number 2, Ryan Garcia vs Oscar Duarte, super lightweight boxing match, main event of the card with the same name. Saturday 2nd in Houston, Texas. This one got me all curious. It's the first fight since Garcia first professional loss versus Javonta Davis last April. King Rai is 25 years old, 23 and 1, 19 wins by way of knockout. He's a really aggressive fighter, incredibly fast and powerful for the weight class. He defeated tough opponents like Luke Campbell, Emmanuel Tago or Javier Fortuna. For his comeback, he will face Oscar Duarte. Duarte is 27 years old, 26, 1, and 1, 21 wins by way of knockouts. He's a pressure fighter that likes to send heavy hooks to the body and then the head, and it's hard to get out of the ropes when he puts you there. He comes out a win versus D'Angelo Keys via Dr. Stoppage, where he could display all of his power. I do think it's a favorable matchup for Garcia, who will have the speed advantage, and he has good movement to avoid being framed by Duarte. I don't see it going through the distance, both always try to finish their fights, so I'd say Garcia via KO, but you will have to be careful as Duarte's power is no joke. And number 1, Benil Dariush vs Arman Sarukyan. Main event of the UFC Fight Night, Saturday 2nd in Austin, Texas. That's the fight I'm the most excited to see next weekend. 
a high level lightweight matchup between the number 4 and the number 8 from this division. First we have Benil Darius, 22 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw with 13 finishes. He's at the UFC since 2014, he has 16 wins inside the organization and he fought tough opposition in his career from Jim Miller and Michael Johnson to Tony Ferguson and Mateusz Gamrot more recently. 34 is still motivated to get after that belt, was on an 8 fights win streak before getting stopped by Charles Oliveira last June. Wayne versus Tsarukian would put him back on track. But Tsarukian has his own aspirations, he's at the UFC since 2019, 7 and 2 inside the organization, his only losses are versus Mahachev and Gamrot, both by decision. Since the loss versus Gamrot in June from 2022, he racked up back-to-back -back wins, including a TKO against Joachim Silva last June. I think it will be a very disputed and close fight. I'd give an edge to Tsarukian. I think he might be able to finish the fight with his striking, but I will not bury Darius too fast. I think he proved in the past that he's full of resources and is really tough to put away. Also to keep an eye on, I think some other fights are worth your attention. There will be Jalen Turner vs Bobby Green, Misha Tate vs Julia Villa at the UFC Austin. And there will be also Floyd Schofield vs Ricardo Lopez on the Garcia vs Duarte boxing card. So that was it for this video, I hope you guys know what to watch now. If you enjoyed that video, please give a hard punch to those like and subscribe button, especially the last one, if you don't want to miss any new releases. Also let me know in the comments what you thought about the crazy fights we had last weekend. And give me some of your picks for the coming matchups. Enjoy the fights, I'll see you next week.